We hear a lot of people talking about services that works for them but really don't know a lot about those services. They just know they are on their computers and they are angry when they can't use them. For example, you'll hear someone saying, check it on the T drive, or I store my files on the cloud, or the network is down because I can't find my T drive. T drive and cloud are just nothing but servers. There are a lot of services that a server can offer. We have different types of servers. Topic for another day. Cloud is nothing but a name given to a lot of devices or equipment that work together in order for you to get your service. For example, when you watch a video on YouTube, there are a lot of devices that are involved for you to watch that video. In your home, you have your router, you have your computer, or maybe you are watching it through a cell phone, you have your cell phone data. Your cell phone is connected to the tower of your service provider. And from your service provider is also connected to other routers on the internet up until they reach the YouTube. So the service that you want of watching your video, it's stored on a YouTube server somewhere around the world. But that's not the focus of our lesson for today. Welcome to Technology for All Academy, an academy that teaches information communication technology for free. To mention but a few, we have CCNA series and Microtech series. And we will also be doing other vendor series in the future. For those who don't know me, my name is Taban Makobe, the founder of Technology for All Academy. In our lesson today, we'll be talking about managing the router OS services. Without wasting time, let me open my Winbox and connect to my router. And now that I'm connected to my router, to go to our services, we click on IP and we go to services, click on services. And this is a list of the services that we have. API, API SSL, FTP, SSH, Telnet, Winbox, www, www SSL. Let me start by disabling the services that we don't use. API, not gonna use it, I'm disabling it. API SSL, not gonna use it. So let's disable it. FTP, we're not gonna use it. So let me disable it. Because if we don't disable them, a hacker can use those ports to access our network and do malicious things to our network. We said that SSH encrypts our data. So in order to show you that our data is encrypted in SSH, I'm going to open Wireshark and then we click on our ethernet. Let me stop the capture. And then we start the capture, continue without saving. And then now what I'm going to do, let me open my party and then my IP address 10.10.10.1. Okay, we're going to use SSH to login, open, and the username is lab test. Enter password 123456, enter. Let's just give one command, IP service, print, enter. And then let me go to my Wireshark and then let's stop our capture. Now let me go up so that we can... Go to our SSH packets. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Here we have it 10.10.10.253 .10 to 10.10.10.1. SSH version 2. Let me click on it. Follow. And then we click on TCP stream. As you can see, everything here is encrypted. Can make sense of the data that is displayed on the screen. So just wanted to show you that. SSH data is encrypted. The following service after SSH is Telnet, which uses port 23. So right now, let me close my party and then let me go to my Wireshark, start capture, continue without saving, and then let's go back to our party. And then my IP is 10.10.10.1. But right now we are going to use Telnet, which uses port 23. And then open lab test enter password one two three four five six enter let's give it again ip service print enter and then now let me go to wireshark and then stop the capture here's a telnet packet 
let's click on our packet and then we go to follow tcp stream as you can see right now we can see there's micro tick micro tick everything it's in clear text you can see everything it's in clear text there's telnet port 23 www port 80 ssh port 22 there's the information everything that we did it's in clear text so as we can see telnet there's our login lab test password it's in clear text one two three four five six we just saw that telnet is not the right tool or service to use because everything is in clear text and a hacker with a wireshark can get our information and do malicious things or whatever he wants to do to our network so we are going to disable let me close it we are going to disable telnet go to telnet okay disable winbox we are using winbox next service is www or http it uses port 80 so let me go to my wireshark and click on capture continue without and then let me open my web browser tap my IP address okay login lab test password one two three four five six enter so you can see I'm inside my web feed let me minimize it stop capture then let's check on our packets here's a TCP packet okay let me click on this packet you can see it's going to port 80 follow stream as you can see we have information in clear text our HTTP or www it's not secure it's almost similar to telnet because they if you do a packet capture the information is in clear text okay let me close it close my wireshark since we saw that http use clear text so what we can do we can double click on our http and then we can change our port to something else that only us can know for example you can make our port 8080 and then let me say okay for example right now i made it 88 if i can go back and then try to access it with port 8 we won't be able to get into our web fake let's see if that's true as you can see this site can be reached 10.10.10.1 10 10 10 refuse refuse to connect but if we can say 10.10.1 .10 .10 calling 88 and then 123456 login we can see we are able to log in when we are using the port 88 let me close it so what i'm going to do i'm going to disable my https or www and last but not least we have www-ssl or https which uses port 443 and it's secure we can say similar to ssh it uses encryption but we cannot use it like we have to create a certificate in order to use uh, the https for example if i use it without a certificate let me show you i won't be able to log in https calling forward slash 10.10 10.10 10.1 and you see this set can provide a secure connection okay let's go to details unsupported protocol deadline and server don't support a common ssl protocol version or cipher suite so we have to create ssl or TL tls certificate in order for us to use https to create our certificate let me go to my winbox and then we click on system click on certificate click the edition side and we have to name our certificate okay let me name it tls set country let's make it as a for south africa and then we leave the rest as they are go to key usage click on digital signature key and settlement clr sign data and settlement key set sign and tls save then i click ok then we double click our certificate and then we click on sign in order to sign our certificate and click start and then it's done let me close okay now we go to ip services and then we click on ww ssl we go to certificate and then we choose the certificate that we created and click ok okay now 
let me open my wireshark click on internet let me stop the capture then start capture continue without saving on my web browser and let's type https colon forward slash 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1 enter and then we know this is the certificate that we created let's click on advance and then proceed to 10.10.10.1 and see password 1 2 3 4 5 6 and click on login and we can see now we are able to access our web fig since we configured our TLS certificate and with that this brings to the end of our lesson hope you found this lesson informative and if you did please share it with someone you think will also benefit from it and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can be notified whenever we drop a video or a lesson. With that, let me love and leave you. Have a great day. Thank you.